Welcome to Overnight America with Ryan Recker on KMOX. Sponsored by Michael's Flooring, the flooring experts, michaelsflooringoutlet.com. Ah, uh, yeah, another hour of Overnight America. That's one way to put it. We're going to talk to a Flat Earth podcast host a little bit later this hour. I'm very excited to bring you Dave Weiss. And he's going to be over the phone, but he will answer your questions if you had any. He said he would actually take your phone calls. I have enough curiosity that I don't know if your phone calls um, will be necessary, but nonetheless, it's not often we get to open up guests like this to the phone call bank. And if you've ever wanted to try to pick the brain of someone who believes the earth is flat, and I guess you may have at least some questions for him, you can even challenge him anything you want. He'll be on a little bit later, and he's from the Flat Earth Podcast. So he's done a lot of different interviews, some big podcasts, too, discussing this sort of thing. So he's going to be on in about 25 minutes from now. We're going to welcome in a guest in the next uh, half hour here. So in the next, like, five, six minutes, his name's Dave Weiss. He's one of the podcast hosts of the Flat Earth Podcast. And we're going to let him explain his journey that convinced him the Earth is flat. And the nice thing is you can call and ask him questions if you want. So we're going to talk to Dave coming up after the break. I think you're going to enjoy it. Weather coming up, too, on Overnight America, KMOX. News Radio 1120, KMOX, the voice of the Cardinals. is the host of the Flat Earth Podcast, Dave Weiss. Thank you so much for joining us on Overnight America. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. I'm excited to have you on. We do this every once in a while. The last time we had a guest on to talk Flat Earth was when Netflix came out with the documentary. And I can't quite remember what the documentary name was, but it got a lot of people talking about it again. Do you remember that one? Yeah. It was called Behind the Curve. And it turned out, you know, it, you got to remember, it was a movie and it misrepresented a lot, but it was a fun I, movie. Yeah, this is what I said about Behind the Curve. And I, again, you, it's interesting because when you talk to people that are interested in doing interviews, you ask them what their thoughts are on Flat Earth. So for someone like me that doesn't subscribe to it, you're not afraid to come on and talk about it. But even watching that documentary, I was thinking to myself, every time they showed someone from the flat earth side, they would play this like cartoony music and they'd make it look like it's a giant clowny thing. And I thought, well, they're not really trying to tell two sides of the story. So that's why I brought someone on to talk about it originally. And for you, from what I understand, um, you were convinced one way and then you switched that the, you, you started to believe that the earth was flat. I'm kind of curious your journey of what convinced you that the earth was flat. Yeah, I'll give it to you in a nutshell. Um, just like everybody else, we've been indoctrinated into the ball earth before we could even speak with Sesame Street and every movie and every you know teacher had a globe. And and then uh, I was getting messages from people, hey, check out this flutter stuff, and I wouldn't even look. But then I was forced to look, and I said, okay, I'm going to prove the globe. And I took the time and the effort, which most people won't do, and – for two weeks, I tried to prove the globe, and I came up empty. I came up empty, and then I realized there's a problem with the globe. And six more years of research, um, I still haven't found a proof of the globe. I know that the Earth isn't a spinning ball, and I could prove it. And the people that hate flat Earth, they they have a misconception of what flat Earth is because they ended up at the Flat Earth Society, which is a disinformation site which just makes it look stupid, and they don't even understand what the globe model is because if you did, you wouldn't believe it. So, You know, the interesting thing about it is that you, you mentioned that's a disinformation site, and I think that when you say you believe the Earth is flat, there's not one universal belief system where everyone subscribes to one thing. And I've noticed that some people believe some things, but not everything. Some people believe these other things. So why do you think there's so many people that believe the earth is flat, but don't have this sort of universal understanding of everything? Well, there's so many people that, that are behind the globe theory that disagree on what, you know, what's out there and they're making up new stuff every day. The flat earth, um, there's, there's a lot to be discovered. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Sorry. 
no. There's a lot to be discovered. But, you know, if we're on a ball, um, the first thing is there should be curvature. There, the globe formula for curvature is a simple formula. It sounds complicated. It's eight inches per mile squared. At three, mile, at three miles, there should be a six-foot drop, and it, it gets steeper and steeper from there. So a six-foot-tall person standing at the edge of water should only be able to see the water for three miles, and then it should drop below the curve. But the problem is the Earth is 70% water, and it's flat. We can see way too far. We can see, especially with um, infrared cameras and whatnot, we can see hundreds of miles for things that should be miles below the curvature, but we can see them with super zoom cameras. So that would be impossible if the Earth was curved. Have you done some of these experiments on your own to try to prove these things, or is this a lot of absolutely. just the research you came to? No, absolutely. I've done it all. Um, not not all, not all, but um, we've done it with lasers over frozen lakes. We've done it with mirror flashes flashing the sun. We've done it with microwaves. We've done it with super zoom cameras. We we um, have done experiments on you know really long cement flat floors showing how things disappear from the bottom up. Uh, due to per, due to the angular resolution limits of your eyes and cameras, and you know all of the you know if you Google flat Earth, you're going to get an article that says ten ways to know the Earth is not flat, and every single one of them has been systematically um, taken apart. Not just like hey that's fake. We don't say that. We show you the science. The problem is the ball model uses what's called scientism. They just say stuff. A guy in a bow tie and a lab coat says boats go over the curve, and, and then they show you a very deceptive video. Um, and then we can show you that that's not the case. A boat will disappear. looks like it disappears on the bottom up, and then we zoom in, and there it is again. The entire boat's back again. So part of the things that people disagree on, and I, I wonder, so – if this uh, basically you say uh, flat earth, are we on a disc and are we kept in the disc by ice or is there a dome or what? So what keeps this encapsulate encapsulated? OK, so the the flat earth society will make you think that the flat earth is a disc floating in space. And either there's other we're the only flat planet or all the other planets are flat. None of that is true. We don't believe um that we're a disk in space. So, so here's a, uh, I'll, I'll sum it up in very, as fast as I can. The Earth is the basement of the universe, for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, we live with the, what I call the, in the Antarctic basin. Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. And we live on continents within the Earth pond. All of the oceans create the Earth pond. Just like a pond is a body of water surrounded by higher land, Antarctica is that higher land, and the world of oceans create that pond. And uh, so you can, uh, the North Pole is in the center of the flat Earth, so if you, and that's a magnetic north. So if you get a compass, you can circle that pole clockwise or counterclockwise, and that would be west or east. And you're following your compass. You think you're going in a straight line, but you're going in a circle around a magnetic north. Now, that doesn't prove the Earth is flat because you can do that on a ball Earth, too. You can even go from America north, past the North Pole, keep going straight. Now you're going south, and you're in Japan. And that doesn't prove it because you can do that on a ball also. But what you can't do on a flat Earth is go from um, South America over Antarctica and then pop up over in Australia or from Johannesburg South Africa and pop up over in New Zealand, which you should be able to do if the earth was a ball, but nobody has ever done it because you can't because the earth is flat, stationary, and it doesn't move. Okay, so Antarctica's in the middle of this disc, and it's no, the no, highest... no. Antarctica okay. is the shoreline around the world ocean. Think of the world as a big pond with islands in it. OK, and the shoreline is Antarctica. So if you sail away from the center in any direction, any direction away from the center of the pond is south. That's away from the northern center. And then when you get to the edge of our known world, there is a wall. It's not a wall like the Game of Thrones. There's an ice wall, an ice cliff. You just look it up online. There's videos, there's a million pictures and no one denies it. It's a 200 high cliff because Antarctica's land is very high. Then you get up there 
It's hundreds of miles of ice. And then there's a mountain range that's supposedly higher than Everest that goes all the way around. And what's beyond there? We don't know because it's off limits. We can get into that if you want. But so you can't fall off the edge because you can't fall off the edge of a lake because there's you're surrounded by land or ice. So that's what Antarctica is. And then the Arctic is in the middle. Go ahead. Yeah, when, um, I, when I looked at your email, and your email has a picture on it when it comes to flat Earth, and it has to do with trying to put an app on your phone. Is that what I'm looking at that would kind of give me a visualization of how to figure out the way the Earth looks? If you just look at the UN map, that's the flat Earth map. That's a picture of it's called the AE map. Some people say it's a projection of the globe. We say the globe is the AE map, you know, wrapped around it. Um, you know, it's used for navigation. Airplanes take crazy flight routes. They make these big arcs. Like to go from an airplane flies from Santiago, Chile, it goes all the way up to the United States, across the United States, and then all the way back down to Australia. But that's like, why did it go all the way into the northern hemisphere when it could have just gone over Antarctica or stayed at 55 degrees south and just cut over like a third of the distance? But then if you look at that on a flat earth map, it's a straight line from Santiago across the United States and all the way to um, Australia. It's a straight line. Airplanes fly over the earth plane in a straight and level line. Okay. Now, the other part of this is, and some people uh, I've heard talk about the theories, is that even if you get to the edge where there's this ice cliff and whatnot, is there something that is over everything? Is there like a dome you can't get across? Some people say there might be, like, it's, it's almost like TVs almost. So it's like a simulated sky. There could be something like that. What do you believe is what happens if you go straight up in the sky? Well, that's a great question, and the answer is, you know, anything that's above where we can reach or beyond the shoreline of Antarctica is speculation, and if we believe in the heliocentric model where we live in a high-pressure gaseous world with an atmosphere and space is a vacuum with no atmosphere, no pressure, it should just suck all the air right off Earth, just like I can suck, you know, water or air through a straw with the weak vacuum of my lungs, the strong vacuum of space should be able to suck the air right off the earth, um, but it doesn't. So there has to be some sort of barrier. Now, if you think about a bubble, like on the bottom, like you're boiling water, or just water, a bubble stuck to the bottom of a pan of water, um, there's no barrier, but you have high pressure next to with water over it. Um, there's a barrier, but what is that barrier? We don't know. Is it frozen? Is it you know glass? Is it something? I think there is a barrier. Um, if you're, you know, if you look at the Bible, the Bible talks about the firmament. Werner von Braun, the Nazi that ran NASA, his tombstone talks about the firmament uh, over that, you know, over the Earth. I don't know why a NASA rocket scientist would say that. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Amateur rocket was shot up in Arizona. It went up really fast, 73 miles, and all of a sudden it went kerplunk, like into a thicker medium. It seemed like water. We don't believe. Space is empty space. We believe space is some sort of liquid. That's what everything leads to. And when this, uh, when this rocket went kerplunk into this thicker medium, uh, it's car it stopped spinning, and you could see very clearly, and it turned on its side, and we could see the moon. Right? This happened in, Ari no, in Arizona, and we could see the moon, and the moon was over Australia at that very moment, but we can see it from Arizona. OK, there's no way that's impossible. It only works on a flat earth. OK, are you are you referring to Mad Dog, the one that did the like the air pressured rocket? Is that the one you're referring yeah. to in Arizona? So absolutely not. I'm referring to this was a uh, like a Red Bull. I think Red Bull did it or something. Some, uh, you know, sponsored team. Uh, the, the Mad Dog thing you're talking about. When you Google Flat Earth, you're going to come up with Mad Mike. Um, you know, there's the guy that was trying to prove the Earth was flat. He wasn't. He was a daredevil taking jumps. And um, some Flat Earthers paid him to put a Flat Earth sign just for publicity. And then the media goes, oh, he's trying to prove the Flat Earth by jumping 1,800 feet in the air. That's ridiculous. Airplanes fly at 35,000 feet, and they don't prove the Earth is a globe. If you Google Flat Earth, if you search for Flat Earth, you get fed disinformation. You get fed lying videos. You get fed all the garbage. 
So that's why I have this app. I'm going to tell you about this app. If you really want to learn about the Flat Earth, check out the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. It's on um, Android and Apple. Um, every day it feeds you new videos. It has all of your questions answered on there. You know, it's like, well, what about boats over the curvature? What about Aristophanes and sticks and shadows? What about, um, you know, what hap- What about southern plane flights or whatever? Any question you have is answered in that app. It's the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. And if you get that, I just say take the Flat Earth app challenge. Watch the, the daily video every day for two weeks, and then you too will lose respect of your entire family and friends because you'll be a flat earther just like me. <laughs> the flat earth podcast.com. And Dave Weiss joins us. Do you mind holding on after the break? I want to talk to you more about some of the things you mentioned here. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and he is the host of the Flat Earth Podcast, which you can find online on that website, and we're going to continue with him next. And by the way, Dave has agreed to take your questions as well. So if you wanted to call in or you wanted to text in questions, you can do that, 314-436-7900. That's how you reach the show. It's Overnight America, KMOX. This is Overnight America, sponsored by Michael's Flooring, the flooring experts. Michael's Flooring Outlet.com on KMOX. So his website is the Flat Earth Podcast.com, which you can check out. Our guest is Dave Weiss. Thank you for sticking around with us tonight on Overnight America. Yeah, here, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. I hear you. Sorry. I think um, so. Our producer is screening some calls now, which is good. Um, I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit more about some of the theories you may have that might not have a concrete answer because um, I know there are disagreements, but when I'm listening to this, I this is what what I start thinking about. I think that um, I, I think that because of all these different disagreements, there's no baseline of understanding when it comes to flat Earth. And that makes it more difficult to make it a scientific approach to try to prove flat earth theory. So is there something that is a baseline that everyone agrees on within the community? And I I also ask this because it sounds like the way you talk about some of the other groups in flat earth, you make it sound like they're not like flat earth purist. And you might be more or less a purist when it comes to this. So it's almost like... Um, you know, like a religion in a sense where some people take things very literally and some things not so literally. Some people take extreme lengths to things some people don't. Is, is that what it's like in the community? Right. Actually, you, you're piling a lot of things on top of a lot of things. So um, there's not different sections of Flat Earth. The Flat Earth Society is government run. It's a disinformation site to make you think Flat Earth is stupid, to make you think it's a disk in space, to make you think that the Earth is rising, uh, causing the, the apparent gravity. None of us believe any of that. It's not even a real site. There's not even real people over there. There might be some crazy people over there, but we have nothing to do with that. The other thing is... Um, there is so much proof. I used to say there's no proof of the flat earth and there's tons of proof of the globe earth. The absolute opposite is true. We can see too far. You can't have high pressure next to no pressure without a physical barrier. Um, every experiment done by scientists over the last hundred years or even longer uh, to prove the earth is spinning and to prove it has curvature has failed and proven the opposite of what they went in with a bias to prove. They went in to prove the Earth was spinning, and they proved it wasn't spinning. Okay? Everything we observe, you know, we, you have to believe it, that, you know, besides the Big Bang, nothing exploded, created everything, you know, created a space vacuum with burning suns and, and rocky balls, and it, uh, the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles per hour. So if the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, which is what you believe, when you watch the sunset, you believe that the, you are falling over backwards on a spinning ball uh, faster than the speed of sound, and that's why the sun appears to go down. While you're spinning, you're orbiting at 66,000 600 miles an hour around the sun while chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour while moving sideways at another million or two million miles an hour. That's the helio nonsensical model. Okay. And all of your senses, everything you see and observe says that you're stationary. If there's a tiny earthquake, the tiniest earthquake, you feel it, you know it, you, your ears flip out, your vestibular system tells you something's wrong. 
but you're having all of these motions. You know, we're dropping at five miles a minute or faster if the Earth was spinning. But that's not it at all. I mean, there's lakes that are glass, that are mirror reflections of the sky because we're not moving. You know, um, do you mind taking a phone call? Absolutely, please. I'd love it. Okay. So uh, Barbara is holding on. Welcome to Overnight America, Barbara. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, I'm a science teacher for life. I have a, um, I, I went to the University of Missouri and to WashU, and uh, the space station is up there, and it shows that we are a globe and that the Earth has gravity and it's holding us in, and it's beautiful pictures from space. They should make a book of it. But we're yeah. we're spinning. We're spinning around the sun because we're uh, God created the earth, and He has us spinning around the sun. And we see the sun, and then we see the moon, and so basically the earth is a round ball. And Christopher Columbus, he came across on the ocean. It was a round ball, and he came across, and uh, he discovered uh, South America. So, Barbara, is, is anything you said there scientific? Is there any science in anything you said? Yeah, there is science because Can if you, you look you at name the, the science specifically, astronauts please. astronauts in space, the Earth is not flat. The Earth is so, a ball. And if you look at all the pictures we're getting from space, from the space station, it's showing the Earth is a ball. And it's rotating around the sun and it's rotating around the moon. And the flat idea was, was, was found out a long time ago that it wasn't right. It wasn't Okay, Barbara, right. thank you. I, I appreciate that. And Okay, so we only have about a minute here if you want to try to uh, give your comments back to Barbara. Uh, go ahead. we got a minute if you want to respond. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There's nothing scientific that she said there. She's she's trusting uh, that you know pictures from she's she's saying that there's pictures of Earth from the space station. There are no pictures of the globe Earth from the space station. If you look into it, NASA admits that they don't have any pictures of space from the space station. Um, not you know we we have so many videos of them on the space station on the space station quotation marks hanging from wires using green screens faking everything. This is a big lie. It's really hard to accept. But uh, the stuff that we see from up there is ridiculous. And then the other thing is Aristophanes she's talking about uh, that discovered uh, the, with sticks and shadows 500 years ago um, in Greece that the, the earth was curved. Uh, that sticks and shadows works perfectly on a flat earth. And the truth about Aristophanes is there's no mention of him in any books until the 1980s where he was inserted into the Rockefeller textbooks. He's a made-up story. The experiment has never been repeated. And even if it was, it doesn't matter because on a flat Earth, you can have the sticks and shadows that come up with the same results. Okay. Uh, Dave, do you mind holding on after the break? I'd love to keep talking to you about this. Let's go all night, my friend. This is great. He's with the Flat Earth Podcast, and you're welcome to call in and ask him any question you want. 314-436-7900. I have a lot more to go. The Flat Earth Podcast. Dave Weiss joins us on KMOX. Welcome to Overnight America with Ryan Recker on KMOX, sponsored by Michael's Flooring, the flooring experts, michaelsflooringoutlet.com. Another special hour with a special guest from the Flat Earth Podcast. You can look it up online, theflatearthpodcast.com. Dave Weiss, thank you for sticking around with us tonight. Thanks. And the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app to show you where we really live. Perfect. And I know there's going to be people that are curious, and we have some people on the line wanting to ask you questions. But I, I do want to ask you one other question, and then we're going to go to we got Mike and Robert holding on. Um, I, one of the questions I do want to ask is when it comes to the basic understanding of what we would call science. So is there a different philosophy in order to make all of what you believe mesh together? Is there like a different type of science that you believe in? Yeah, we believe in real science. The science that they use for astronomy is called pseudoscience, where they just say something, don't show you any proof, you live on a ball. You know, they, they observe something and then tell you what the cause is, and then they don't do anything testable and repeatable. Like if we lived on a ball, there would be physical curvature, and there isn't any. We do the science, actual science, testable, repeatable, observable, and 
it shows that there is no curvature, no curvature, no ball. The earth is 70% water, large bodies of water at rest, lay flat, there's no curvy water. Um, Think about this. The Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator. If you have an airplane that's taking off from Alaska, Alaska, because it's closer to the axis of rotation on the ridiculous ball Earth, is only going at like three or 400 miles an hour. If it flew to Ecuador and tried to land on a runway that's north and south, that runway is moving sideways at 1,000 miles per hour. How is that plane going to land? Runways okay. aren't moving. If they, were, if they were moving at all, the plane would crash. Hmm. Uh, well, let's take some more calls on this, because I know there's pe- all kinds of people that have questions on it. And let's go to Mike first. Sure. Welcome to Overnight America, Mike. Hey, first of all, this is a fun topic. Thanks, guys. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm pretty simple, you know, uh, don't have a big education in science, went to high school. Um, but here's my question. So if we took the highest point on Earth and we went up, what we perceive as the highest point, and we leveled off in a plane with a level, and you just kept flying at some point. If the Earth is round, wouldn't you fly off the Earth? You can Absolutely. Airplanes, airplanes use gyros that spin and hold rigidity in space, regardless of, of the gravity or the force that we call gravity. And if the airplane turns sideways, the, the gyro stays level with the Earth, and that's how the pilot knows how much he's turned up and down gyros would make the airplane fly right off into space. An airplane flying at 550 miles an hour on a 24,901-mile-around ball would have to nose the airplane down a mile every two minutes. When you're on an airplane cruising, when the pilot just starts to make that descent gently into your airport, you notice it. You even wake up if you're sleeping. If you're flying, you would be nosing down a mile every two minutes. That's faster than any descent into any airport we don't. Airplanes fly straight and level over the Earth plane. Airplane, not air globe. So what, well, going back to what Mike mentioned there, so why can't you just fly to this edge and just keep going? Because Antarctica is far away. You know, you can fly there. There's the Antarctic Treaty that says no one can travel south of the 60 degrees south um, latitude line. And without permits and everything... They don't fly any flights over Antarctica because Antarctica isn't an island at the bottom of a ball. You know, Antarctica is the land that surrounds us. So could you physically? Sure, you could. But where are you going to go? Compasses don't work down there. GPS doesn't work down there. It's dark out. I keep saying down there, out there. Um, Where are you going to go? They're not going to let you fly there. You're going to get lost if you do go there. Um, Maybe you'll crash into the dome. I don't know. I haven't been there. Yeah, but it would be to prove it, though. So why wouldn't someone at least try it? Well, people have tried, and they've been stopped by military force. Their boats have been threatened to sink. People have been arrested. And uh, if you want to go independently explore Antarctica, it'll cost you about $200,000 in permits. You will get denied, and they keep your $200,000. Nobody can independently explore Antarctica. In 1957, they came up with the Antarctic Treaty. All of a sudden, in 1957, every country in the world agreed Signed this treaty, said we must protect the penguins, we must protect the ice. No one could drop a cigarette butt on this ice. It has to stay pristine. It's the only pristine place. This was done before um, environmentalism was even a word, okay? It's still in place today, and you can't even question the treaty until the year 2041. No corporation, no person can even question the treaty. But meanwhile, we can deforest the Amazon jungle and plant palm oil trees. Makes no sense. Uh, Robert is holding on the line, too. Let's take his call. Welcome to Overnight America. Hey, hello, gentlemen. David, greetings to you, my friend. Greetings, Robert. In in your opinion, if supposedly from 1969 until 1972, a total of six times NASA traveled to and from the moon, and they went through these things called the Van Allen radiation belts. According to the NASA trial by fire, Orion trial by fire video, which is very easily searched on YouTube. It is also on their website. We cannot send people that far into space anymore because of the deadly radiation belts that they, that they have named the Van Allen belts. In your opinion, how is it possible 
that these supposed astronauts accomplished this successfully, round trips six times from 1969 to 72, but they are no longer able to do that. And my last yeah. question is, I would like your thoughts on three quotes from people. I would like to know what you think about Neil deGrasse Tyson in the 2014 South by Southwest event where he said, from that height, that stuff is flat. I would also like to know what you feel about the astronaut Don Pettit saying, well, I would go back to the moon in, the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is uh, we lost the technology. to We destroyed the technology to do that, and it's a painful process to bring it back again. And lastly, I would like your opinion on the quote – from, from Elon Robert. Musk, where he says, oh, <laughs> I was guessing. <laughs> well, Elon Musk, that's a classic, isn't it? But the last and final one is from um, Robert Simmon, the NASA data visualizer, Mr. Blue Marble, when he says, It's it Photoshop, Photoshop because but it has to be. It right. has to be. And uh, right. if you can comment on the aforementioned, I'd very much appreciate it. Oh, and regarding that previous woman that called, she said something very interesting. She said, God created the Earth, and it does this and that, but... I highly encourage her, coming from me, I am on my third translation of the Bible, so no man can say, well, you know those have been translated. The book clearly describes an enclosed, intelligently designed system, and yes, the firmament from the Hebrew word rachia, which means a strong beaten out structure. From those, for those who are listening, if you do believe that we are not evolved orangutans, I highly encourage you to, to go back into the word and read exactly what this book says. And uh, I just want to say, David, I thank you for all you do, my friend. Well, okay, all right, Robert, thank, thank you. I'll try to work. Call. How, how much right. time do I have to answer? I'll keep it as quick as I can. Uh, go as um, long as you need. Go ahead. All right, so uh, just working backwards, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about uh, Felix, Felix Baumgarten, who did the Red Bull jump. He went up 138,000 feet all right, in a balloon. He was up there for three and a half hours, and when he jumped, think about this. The Earth is spinning 1,000 miles an hour to the east, so he went up, disconnected from the Earth. The Earth is spinning to the east. He should have landed out in the ocean in the west, but he didn't. He landed east of where he took off, and um, he, uh, he showed a picture of a big curved Earth, but it was all New Mexico, like the entire curve of the Earth was New Mexico. And Neil pointed out because of us flat earthers exposing that the Red Bull jump did not prove that using a fisheye lens, um, Neil had to make a speech and he said, you can't see the curve of the Earth from 138,000 feet. Uh, that stuff is flat. That was his comment. The problem is every time we bust one of their lies, they move the globe post. They just move it farther out. So now, you know, it used to be at, at you know, 70,000 feet, you can see the curve. Now it's 138,000 feet, you can't see the curve. You can't see the curve anywhere. Um, the other thing, what was the, the first thing he was talking about? It was, um, God. Oh, dude. boy. I, I don't remember the yeah. very first thing. It was about space so, travel. So the, the multiple times from oh, yeah. 69 the, the, the to 72. Moon, the moon, the moon, yeah, the moon trips. Um, anybody that takes any honest look at the moon missions, you know that they're fake. Yeah, I can tie it to the, to the um, Red Bull Jump. The Red Bull Jump went up 138,000 feet, and they could barely communicate with the guy. This was in the 2000 and something, you know, to the year 2005 or whatever it was. They could barely communicate with the guy from the ground directly below him uh, um, 138,000 feet up. They were losing calm. But in the 1960s, President Nixon on a landline phone can talk to the guys on the moon without a delay, with a perfect connection. Okay? Something is wrong here, right? If you look at any of the footage uh, on the space station, we can see that they're hanging from wires. They're using green schemes, as I said before. If you look at the moon mission, the, the, the lander, this, this thing is made out of it's, – it's a tweaker shelter. It's a homeless tweaker shelter. It's made out of tin foil, paper mache, curtain rods, and duct tape. And two guys went in there with a golf cart with a you know, dune buggy and golf clubs. They went on the, room, the moon. They drove around. They played golf. They, they, they came back. If you look at any of the footage, it doesn't hold up. It never hold, held up. Then they came back, and they had a press conference, and it looked like their dogs were just murdered by their, their posture and their attitude. They were, they were forced to lie. I don't know what the story was, but everything about NASA is evil and fake. Nobody has ever been into space because space – is misdescribed. Hmm. All right. So I have one last question for you and we can, um, 
we can wrap it up after this. And I, I think this might be the, the thing that a lot of people do wonder. So it, wh why teach the otherwise? Why would there be this why giant the conspiracy? Yeah. Why, why? Why would there be this giant yeah. cover up of the truth? Right. So the, the answer to that is if you believe that you are on a random speck in an infinite godless or distant God universe, and, and that an asteroid could take you at any at any time that you are just a random accident coming from nothing. You give away your divine power. We are. And then if you realize, hey, you know, I, by the way, I was pretty much an atheist before I discovered that the Earth was intelligently designed. Oh, my God, this Earth that we're on is tel intelligently designed. We are at the center of creation. We are powerful beings having an experience here with God given free will and rights that nobody can take away from us unless we willingly give them away so the elite are luring our souls away our goal our our goal here on earth is to maintain control of our soul and not sell our soul and not you know lose our lose our way we're having a journey here in this realm that we live in and um, they're convincing us that we are meaningless that, there, that there's nothing more and that we are powerless but once people realize we're in this created place and that we are special and that we are powerful, um, then they can't affect you. You know, there's no power anyone has over you. You know, the people call them the elite when I say they, the elite. Well, it's not the elite. It's the, you know, I don't want to say a bad word, but, you know, the, the, the horrible, nasty people um, that, that are claiming authority over you and they don't have authority over you. If you're lost in space, you are powerless and helpless. OK, but if you know who you are, where you are, what you are, you take your power back and they can't have that. They need our fear and our willingness to uh, submit to their authority. That's why it's the most important secret. One more thing I want to say is we have not known the earth is flat for 500 years. That's a lie. I interviewed a woman in January, 102 years old. She remembered her fifth birthday party. I was interviewing her about the World's Fairs, and I asked her, what did they teach you in science? Because she knew her teacher's names and everything. And, and what did they teach you in science in elementary school? And she said, they taught me the earth was flat. In the 1920s, all across America, everyone was being taught the earth was flat. We found a woman in Croatia in the 1930s. She said all of Croatia knew the earth was flat. Everyone knew the earth was flat until the early 1900s when this cabal or whatever changed history. They started all these wars. They're destroying all of the evidence. There's so much evidence of flat earth. It's unbelievable. It stacks up, and it all can be found on the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you Google Flat Earth, you're going to be led right to the Flat Earth Society to nonsense. But if you get this app, take the app challenge. The app is $2.99. That's it. And just watch the video every day. Hit the 21 questions. If you hit the 21 questions, by the way, bring food and water because you're going to be stuck there for a long time. You're not going to want to come out. All right. And the website <laughs> is the Flat the Earth Podcast dot com. And people could find links and things on there. Yeah, the links the links are there. The Flat Earth Podcast. Um, you know, the link to the app is there and it's the Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app by Blue Water Bay. And um okay. that's it. Yeah. You know, it, once you go there you'll you'll find lots of stuff. And again, don't believe anything I say. I just pointed to some doors. I, I told you some things that, like, hey, there's another explanation why ships go over the horizon. There's another explanation why shadows are different in different places on the Earth. There's another explanation of what's going on above our heads. Those lights we see in the sky, um, there's another explanation for what they are. Hmm. Dave Weiss, and again, the website, theflatearthpodcast.com. You spent a lot of time with us tonight. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it and answering some questions I'm sure a lot of people had. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, talk to you soon. That is, again, Dave Weiss. Uh, you can find him at theflatearthpodcast.com. And, yeah, we got some text messages, things like that. I really... I, we do this about once a year, I would say, and it's been a little while since we've had one of these. And I, it's so strange because whenever we do this, this becomes easily our most downloaded podcast. Whenever we have someone on to talk flat earth theory, easily it's our most downloaded podcast. So I don't do it for that. I'm just always curious what other people believe. And he certainly has a lot of beliefs. And you can find him online if you wanted to look out more. He joins us on the Quiver River Electric Guest Line. It's Overnight America KMOX. Thank <laughs> you.